Well, today is a bit of a play day. Having anything outside isn't good. Hello. Hello. I can subscribe. <laughs> it's, oof, it's a hefty old thing. This looks promising. Well, welcome to the old classic car channel. Today is a bit of a play day. Um, we've had some terrible weather recently, and this is a first half decent day. So we're going to take advantage of it. So the Anglia's outside. We're taking that to a show this weekend, so we'll give it the usual check over. MX-5 covers off because uh, it's getting a bit damp under there. And one of the other jobs we want to do today is to fire up the tractor. Uh, Harley's going to give it a clean. That's more part of his half-term duties for this week. So. Uh, it's been outside a little bit green here and there so he's going to give it a, a bit of a freshening up today so we need to get this running i had it running a week or so back so i don't envisage too many problems the only problem i had with it was the little brush in the center of the just, just, just the distributor cap kept working its way back into the uh, cap itself and uh, thus losing the contact with the rotor arm which was a bit of a problem but as long as you pull it down it starts up pretty readily so we're going to move that and really, just have a, a bit of a reassessment of things. Uh, obviously, we've had several named storms passing through recently, and that's had various consequences for the covers out here. As you can see, the cover on the comma is pretty much destroyed. The A40 is not so bad because I've moved it under there, so it's partially covered. But really, realistically, having things outside covered up is just a nightmare. So I really need to move away from that. If you were following the channel a year or so back, you'll have seen a video I put up where I basically spoke a little bit about changing how I go about keeping these old cars because it's very easy to get into a position where you've actually just got too much to do and not enough space, time and energy to actually get on with anything. So uh, I spoke then about streamlining things and moving away from lots of vehicles that need work to having fewer vehicles that actually work. Now obviously the MGB is staying, Little Morris is staying and Little Dodge is staying but I need to get the A40 under cover. The big comma is going to go sometime as soon as I've got that ready. I'll uh, make some moves about advertising that as I again as I discussed in that video last year. The A40 has to come inside and now the only way of doing that is to make space in here so sadly I think the Prefect is going to have to go. Um, it's a lovely little car I really like this car it's so original such an honest little survive and quite rare too but thinking about it the other day even once it's back on the road it really is kind of duplicating what the Anglia already does and that's already on the road so like I say in a bid to try and move away from lots of vehicles that need lots of work to get them on the road and move towards having fewer that just need looking after I think this will go with that sold it'll then free up space in here to get the A40 back under cover and that's got to be the right thing to do the A40 has been in the family from new in 1960 I took my test in it in 87 and it really has to be has to be finished um, so the only way that's going to happen having stuff outside having it covered up outside is okay short term but long term you never get anything done when things are on the covers outside plus I can rearrange things and get a little dodge out again because this hasn't moved in ages and it really needs to so that's the plan of attack big comma goes move the a40 prefect will go oh, there's trouble the prefect will go the angler will stay and then i also plan to try and get something that we can use for longer trips i spoke about this in a recent video as well um because i mean these are lovely i love all this sort of thing but they're not great for longer distance trips that was the idea behind buying the volvo last year but that didn't really gel very well with what i want to be spending my time working on so there is still a plan to go and find something but in the short term at least the comma has to go and sadly so does the prefect now at the moment the van is tucked away under this lean-to but this lean-to is decidedly rickety so i can't rely on this forever either um, it's dry under here you get a good breeze and so on but this is another one which I've got to really think, what am I going to do with it? I would love to keep it. Now, anyone who knows me will know that I've been around the 83W since the 1980s. But can it carry on living under here much longer? Um, like I say, it's all, a bit, it's all a bit rickety. And the wind that we had, the gales that blew through here just a week or two back, didn't do it any favours. So while it's still standing, I'm not sure how reliable the structure is anymore like I say I want to move away from having things 
outside, half outside, getting damp, getting damaged with covers, blowing rain, blowing off, etc. It's just a nightmare and I've just had enough. So this one, I'm not quite sure yet. We'll have to see on this one, but the comma and the prefect will definitely have to go. This looks promising. Now, regulars to the channel will know that I like to drone on a little bit about automobilia in many of these videos, so I thought today we'll just have a look at a selection of three classic bottle jacks, all probably well, it's 1930s, 40s, 1950s, that kind of period. The one on the left is oh, it's a hefty old thing, and this is by Ernest Lake Limited. And if we flip it over, we can see they were based in Bishop Stortford Harry Hearts, they are Hertfordshire, there we go so that's nicely named and there's a few extra little details on the base here which I can't quite make out, various numbers and so on but that, that is just a piece of industrial art as far as I'm concerned I just think they're lovely and this is obviously designed to pick up on a chassis member now whether this was for a particular vehicle it would have been a fairly heavy vehicle possibly even a light commercial that this would have been designed for even down here it says van laden and van unladen so not quite i've not really investigated this in great detail there's a patent supplied for writing on there and a part number on here but i just think they're they're lovely looking things and uh, if you're after something to collect and you haven't got a huge amount of space um, these are a great thing to collect because they also work if you can find the handle for it and that's often the thing that's missing actually handles are nearly always missing from these things so if you find one with a handle it's probably a good idea to grab it but I just think when they're oily ragged and cleaned up especially when they've still got quite a lot of the original paint but not all of it I just think they clean up and look really fantastic and aligned together. So that's the fairly heavy Ernest Lake Limited one that we've dragged out here. Next to that, we have a slightly later Lake and Elliot. I'm assuming this is the same Lake as Ernest Lake over there, but perhaps by this one, the time this one was made, they'd merged with a company called Elliot. Also made in England we like we approve of that and again it's a fairly hefty example and if we have a look on here it says two ton so yeah this would have been for a reasonably hefty car or a light ish commercial vehicle I'm not quite sure if this one turns or not but we won't worry too much about that but obviously you can extend it by winding this out and in and out but again it's just a lovely old thing most of the original green paint is on it and that just wants a bit of oil wiping over it but that i think looks fantastic especially when it's alongside that one there and third we have another lake and elliot of braintree this is a much lighter smaller example again with most of its original green paint which looks fantastic and here if we just lean it on there we can see 1500 weight now 10 hundred weight is half a ton so this is three quarter ton so this would have been for quite a small car something of that ilk and again is a really nice thing and these turn up and they're not huge money sometimes you see people asking quite optimistic prices for them on ebay and such like but you get the impression they're probably not going to sell particularly quickly this sort of thing you can buy in boot sales auctions places like that you know for five ten pounds something you can sometimes find them for um, they're not huge money at all because most people don't actually need them most people don't even work on their own cars anymore so they're not going to need something like this so uh, they either get thrown away chucked in a skip or occasionally they find their hands uh, way into the hands rather of someone who actually appreciates them and i do so that's why these ones have been rescued there's a few more down there which could be the subject for a future video so let me know if you want to see more videos about old jacks there's another one here actually which i'd forgotten about this one here just for comparison 
is a wanton Harvey Frost. Now Harvey Frost was a well-known manufacturer of jacks, recovery equipment, uh, cranes to go on the back of recovery vehicles and so on, jacks, all sorts of things, wheel dollies to tow cars and lift the front wheels off the ground, all that kind of thing. So this is a nice one, Harvey Frost, one ton. Anything else on here? Just a regis registered design number. Again, green paint, seems to be a bit of a theme. And again, just a lovely thing. And this one, I'm assuming this was sold for a particular purpose because it's got an adapter on the top here. So that would have fitted a very narrow chassis rail, perhaps not dissimilar to the Morris down there, actually. And you can flick it out of the way if you wanted a wider foot to go under a larger chassis or perhaps a slightly flatter chassis. But that would have been for one specific use and one specific use only. So anyway, that's a few old jacks, but back to the uh, activities at the other end of the garage. Obviously, if the Angley hadn't come along, then this would definitely stay. But like I say, there's, uh, they're so similar. This is really just a four-door version of the Anglia. And uh, if the Anglia hadn't popped up last year, I would definitely be keeping this. But as the Anglia is here and I can use it straight away, it kind of duplicates this one, makes this one, I don't know, a little bit surplus. And with the limited amount of space that I've got, I've just got to try and uh, be a little bit sensible, so uh, maybe I think this one will have to go. Let's go and see how he's doing with cleaning up the tractor. It's good to see him doing a bit of work. He's doing a video for his car traction channel at the moment. Hello. Hello. I can subscribe. <laughs> Have you finished yet? No. Why not? One wing? Is that it? I've done it very well. I've done it very well. Have you? Yes. Let's have a look then. So you've done one wing in about half an hour? No, 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 no. I've done the... Oh, you've done the axle as well, yeah, this side? Uh, no, I've gone around there. And I've done the helmet as well. The, the bonnet? So far. Right. Yeah, it's been more than a wing. Alright, good. Um, and the... Yeah, it's just a weird... Well, this is the hydraulics, this operates the hydraulics, that lifts this, these things here. I've not tried that for a few years, but it did used to work. Oh, I remember that, and I remember the little skid thing. We had the little like, tray thing yeah. on the back and you could ride in it. Could, like, go up and down. Yes. Like, yeah, well, we've still got that. Go. We've still got it. Uh, whether the hydraulics still work or not, I don't know. See, this is, this is his responsibility to keep the tractor looking nice. This is his... Yes. This is your task. It is. It is. What do you think? What do you think about that? Hopefully, it'll be worth it because my sleeves have never been this wet. Oh. It should be satisfying to see it clean for about a week. Yes. And then we'll have to do it again. <laughs> I'm sure you love it, really. <laughs> That's something to do. Oh, well, I've had a bit of a sweep up. It was pretty, pretty mucky because I've been scraping all the old mud and things from underneath the prefect recently. So, here's a little dodge, a bit easier to get at now. Uh, this hasn't been on the channel for a little while, so maybe just have a quick chat about what this car is. It dates to about 1924. It was shipped over to Australia when it was new to New South Wales. Uh, it would have been sent as a kit of parts, so the front end and all the black wings, the chassis, the running boards and so on. That's original Dodge and then once it got over there it was bodied by a local coach builder. So the main tub, the bit that you sit in, that was bodied in Australia. And if we have a look on the dashboard you can see the original supplying dealer. It's the Weymouth Motor Company of Adelaide. And that is where it spent most of its life until about 10 years ago or so it was brought over here and I bought it probably about 10 years something like that it wasn't really a running when I got it so it needed a bit of fettling but it looks like it's an older restoration I think it was probably done maybe 20 25 years ago something like that so it's mellowed in the paint's a bit scruffy in places but I'm not too worried about that like I say so it's 1924 it's a three and a half litre what was that a bit windy. Um, it's a three and a half litre side valve engine, big 
sort of plodder, um, loads of torque, doesn't rev really. Obviously it's a four seat tour, lots of room in the back. Three speed gearbox, all the gears are in the wrong place, the pedals are also the wrong way around. There are no brakes on the front, just like a Model T. As you can see, no braking up this end. It just has brakes at the back. The handbrake and the foot brake both work on the back here. The handbrake operates shoes inside the brake drum, which is there. And the outside linings here, that's the foot brake. Um, so if you ever, if these get wet, if you drive through a big puddle, it does reduce their efficiency somewhat. But the handbook does refer to the handbrake as being an emergency brake rather than handbrake. So it's quite common to use both brakes in conjunction with each other if you had to slow down in a bit of a hurry. But because it only does like 30 odd miles an hour and there's so much engine braking when you take your foot off the accelerator, you get loads of braking anyway. So you don't actually rely on the brakes all that much most of the time. So that is the... 1924 Dodge and I really need to get this out get it fired up and just get some heat through everything because like I say it hasn't run for months it's been in here obviously with the winter but even prior to that it hadn't seen a great deal of use so uh, I want to get it out get it running and hopefully take it to a few shows in the very near future what's another reason to cut back on things a little bit um, is to finish off a few jobs on big Dodge Obviously long term as to the website will know the ordeal of having this restored, well, over 10 years ago now. That was really quite, quite the process. And it'd be nice to get it out somewhere this year. Um, obviously the idea was to get it all back into running condition. There's still a few jobs outstanding as with any restoration. Um, it was a, well, it was a, it was an interesting an interesting saga the whole restoration of this old truck one of which I might do a video about one day um, but I mean I've had this since 1995 and this is why we moved here because the garage was here so I could accommodate this at home previously it had always been in barns and hangars and every time you had to move it it was a low loader job and it was just a pain in the neck to be honest so it kind of focused our mind many years ago to find someone that had a decent sized garage and fortunately this was here and um, the garage did need modifying to get the height because previously the previous owner had only ever had cars in here which obviously aren't quite as tall as this but yeah it'd be nice to get this out as well this year sometime so what else is going on with the, the collection of cars here We've still got a 32 morris minor that's not going anywhere um, again this is one i would like to sort of spend a bit more time on once i've cleared the decks and cleared my head a little bit the MGB, that may well go over to Dad's because he's got an empty space in his garage, but there are rumours of him filling it again, so I might have to pull my finger out on that one before he gets ideas of buying something else. <laughs> um, or else it might just stay here and I'll just have to work around it, but either way, that's not going anywhere. I will do a video about that, as I said in the previous one, because uh, it's 60 years of the MGB this year, so it'd be nice to do a bit of a chat about this mgb which has got quite an interesting history um so that's the that's the mgb that's the moggy minor we've talked about the a40 getting that back under cover where are we there we are comma that's going the little van not sure yet prefect go anglia stay big dodge of course that's not going anywhere tractor that'll probably stay for now because it's quite handy and i think we're more or less up to date now Actually, I forgot about the MX-5. This one um, is on Sawn at the moment, off the road for the winter, but it'll assume in March. I think we'll probably tax it. Um, as soon as the salt disappears off the road, this can go back on the road. Um, it's just a, a heap of fun, really. Um, yeah, that's a great little car. Well, while he's getting on with that, I will make a start on digging the Dodge out, I think. I've cleared out some of the rubbish that's in front of it. See, the, the, the floor actually drops down. So I had to build up this sort of ramp with various bits of wood that were kicking around. Just so that I had a straight run through because otherwise you have to go down ramps here. And it just makes getting the car out again a bit tricky. But if it's all on the same level, it just make life, makes life a whole lot easier. I'll have to pinch the battery back off the uh, tractor as well. But as that doesn't seem too keen on starting again, um, that probably won't be an issue for him. Oh, well, that's the battery for Little Dodge on charge. I've just taken it back off the tractor. 
the battery there, the 6 volt uh, doesn't appear to uh, have much life left in it but this 12 volt which we use on this because 12 volt is the original system on this this is quite a good battery so we'll just give it a bit of a boost and then after lunch we'll see if the Dodge will actually fire up well, I've had a bit of a move around so let's have a look see how the battery is doing for the little Dodge Well, that should do, I'll put it on charge fully overnight, but there's enough juice in there, hopefully, to fire it up. So we'll get this on the car and see if there's any signs of life. The fuel's going to be a little bit old, but if it's anything like the tractor, these old things usually run on pretty much anything. So uh, fingers crossed on that one. Well, she's running. It took a little while to pull the fuel up from the tank. It relies on engine vacuum to draw the fuel up into this tank here. And it's a gravity feed out the bottom and into the carburetor float chamber which is there. This fuel smells a bit old but I've got some fresh so I'll put that in. I won't leave it running too long because it gets a bit fumey in here. But at least it's good to hear her running again because she hasn't run for ages. The smoke is just WD-40 that I sprayed over the engine and the manifolds and so on while it was in store um, just to keep the dampness at bay so that will take a little while to clear but she doesn't sound too bad fingers crossed well i think i'll do for today's tinkering so um, it's been an interesting little day the weather has been great so it's a case of making the most of what we've given um, angley has been running i've had a bit of a talk about some of the other stuff uh, and Little Dodge is back up and running again. I won't have it running for a short time, but I'll put some fresh fuel in tomorrow. And then uh, we should be good to sort of get a bit of a proper run. Just get everything worn through, check the clutch and so on. Just make sure everything is working as it should be. Um, so, thank you very much for watching this short video. Uh, plenty of other videos on the channel and there are plenty more in the pipeline too. So, if you haven't liked, subscribe, that kind of thing, I would really, really appreciate that. And more videos along very, very soon. So, bye for now. Well, it's Friday the 25th of February today. The sun has actually made an appearance and the wind has died down and it's actually a really nice temperature. And there's a slight breeze, but out of the breeze, it's actually almost bordering on warm. So uh, it's just just perfect. Um, really just thought I'd say a quick few words just to thank everyone for supporting the channel so far. Um, obviously, I blew the cobwebs off it in about March of 2020. Um, when we were a bit stuck for things to do and I've sort of carried on updating the channel ever since I'd like to just thank everyone for supporting the channel and sticking with it I appreciate that not every video is of interest to every person that's subscribed but I guess that's the, that's the way of the world with YouTube somewhat so hopefully I'll continue to be able to create content that some of you will find interesting some more than others obviously but uh, yeah thanks for sticking with me and uh, hopefully we can carry on and build on the progress that we've made so far so uh, thanks very much for that